All right, I'm going to roll here. I know you already had Dave and EB. Usually I get slotted second, but you got me last today. Um, look, at, I'm not going to take too much time. Uh, I'm sure, I mean, look, at we're on game 11 in our brain going forward. I'm sure there'll be questions about last week. The only thing I would open up and say is that as a defensive unit, certainly we're tremendously disappointed in the way we finished the game. We, we feel like that's the time we should shine. That didn't happen. They executed better than we did. We ended up losing, and we got to live with that. So having said that, I do think the guys have responded well this week. Um, it's been a couple of days right now. It's a long week because you get the extra day, but uh, hopefully we just move forward and we do a little bit better next time that happens. With that, I'll open it up. Steve, you had a lot of guys who seemed to play well against the Vikings two weeks ago, guys like uh, Ragland and Pennell and Saunders and uh, Damian Wilson and you know, a couple more. It, it didn't play a whole lot against Tennessee. You know, I know you played fewer snaps against Tennessee, and Frank Clark did that yeah. too. But why some of these guys who were playing well? Why didn't they play as much against? Well, the names you I'm listening to the ones that you rattled off. So Reggie is dictated a little bit by what they put in. Um, I'm going to mix my teams now because uh, I'm watching all charges stuff, and they have a lot of uh, three wideouts. Um, I want to say that Tennessee did the same thing. My guess is with the Reggie situation, that's exactly what it was. The other thing with the, when you said Colin and oh, Damien, yeah, yeah, we went, we did go, there was another package that we had in that was a little bit different. It was for some coverage reasons. Um, so we changed up there. And then they dictated uh, what we were going to be in package-wise just by what they put in. So that's probably why that happened. It wasn't, there was no, um, have different guys in for there was no no reason rhyme or reason for it. It just worked out that way. Uh, Pennell was inactive though, so that was yeah. Well, that would take care of that one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but the, the decision. I mean, to just follow up on what Adam was talking about. I mean, he had been really good on the inside, but he was surprised by how well they ran the ball because it seems like the guys that had been really good runs. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was as much the guys that were in there as you know. I probably could have when when we looked at it over uh, when it was all said and done, felt like we could have call a few more run pressures that might help us. So that's not them, that's me. Um, when we got down to the DX and activation and talked about it, I think what we decided was that Joey Ivey, should we have had an injury, plays a little bit of the dime rush stuff. So he gave us a little bit of an edge there. So we, we ended up going in that direction. Uh, Chris Jones, uh, I know he's Minnesota's playing defensive end now with Ogba being out. Yeah, we'll be a little bit back and forth. He's probably going to have to play both for us now. Coach, you mentioned yeah. the defense feeling a tremendous disappointment, especially with, with Travis, excuse me, Derek Henry, what he was able to do in the second half. Yeah. And it seems like every time you, you, you turn a corner, then you have something yeah. like this happen. What kind of confidence do you have going into Monday night knowing you're going to face Gordon and Eckler? Yeah, well, look, at it. We, we, we go in every game confident. You know, we put together a game plan and trust the guys and believe in the guys we have. We're not going to walk in there thinking we're gonna, not going to be able to stop anybody. But we, we treat every team that we play with a lot of respect. We did last week. You know, they, you know, when you pop one out for 69 yards, I mean, obviously things, and we, get, we got reeling a little bit, and you got to recover, and you got to go. I thought we recovered pretty good. And then the second half, they decided to run, and we did, didn't do a good job. I still will say this, that drive in the second half, second to last drive, uh, in my mind, was a two-possession game. I fully thought that they were going to throw the football. If you go back and look, I mean, we're, we're, I'm calling it that way. And in hindsight, it wasn't the right thing to do. Should have had uh, a little bit more run pressures, like I said, try to stop the run. Uh, so they won that mental battle there. Um, but I, we'll go into every game. Um, first of all, trying to stop the run. That'll be the focus, just like this week, it'll be the same thing. Could, just to go back to Chris Jones, how, what did you think of him at the end when you've seen him? Yeah, he, he, listen, he's, the guy's a good football player, so we feel like we can put him in both spots. It's a little bit challenging, I think, from the we're putting a lot on his plate from a mental standpoint. He's been a tackle forever and did that all the way through. And if you remember, he has he was not here in the OTA, so it was training camp. And then asking him to go out there, he, he he's great at doing it. Uh, he's more than willing. Um, he's just got to fight through a little bit of the volume of the mental part of it. Steve, I think there was a on the short touchdown run ten on the field. Yeah, yeah, that's my that's my mistake. Didn't get they they did not switch personnel. I don't believe. And I decided to switch personnel. So in hindsight, to leave the guys out there that are out there. So now, having said that, you know we're all responsible to get 11 out there. The other guys went out, and that's the way it works. But uh, we can't, yeah, we can't have that happen. Coach Frank Clark said in the locker room the other day that being sidelined for 
probably one of the first times in his career. He said he's been relatively healthy throughout his you know time in the NFL. He said he learned a lot about how to be a veteran on the sideline and, and really communicating with the younger guys. What have you seen in his leadership and how maybe it grew? Um, yeah, I mean, look, he's been yeah, he's been really good in that capacity. Um, I mean, I'm trusting that if he said it, it helped them or changed them. I think sometimes when you do that and you're not in the middle of the heat of the battle, you get to put your eyes on things big picture. And it sounds like that's what he did. And it, uh, I'm glad that he grew from it. That's, that's a positive for us. Coach, as a follow-up on it, one of the other things he said was that the, the neck is something he's been dealing with kind of all season. I know you haven't coached him previous to this year. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Uh, so how much has that affected him? If, if, if that's been something that's there, I don't know that. I mean, I really can't answer that. I mean, it'd be a better question for Rick and for, for uh, Frank himself. I mean, I, that would just be speculating on my part. Going back to Austin Eckler a little bit, I mean, you faced some dual dart running backs. Aaron Jones, for example, with the Packers, and yeah. Rivers likes to throw yeah. his backs more than any other quarterback in the league. How do you prepare for a challenge? Yeah, that's a very similar, it's a good analogy you have. Green Bay kind of gave us the same challenge. Now, hopefully we've learned from that, uh, and we've put together a game plan in anticipating that. He's, uh, he's the best in the league, I think, numbers-wise, as far as getting catches as a running back. Um, he was a focus from meeting number one, and hopefully we can follow through with that game plan. A couple more, guys. The Packers game is where you had some of those mismatches with the linebackers, yeah. and Jones and Jamal Williams as well, but how much more prepared do you feel now seeing how some of those yeah. matches kind of fell apart? I think that helps. I think it helps to have, you know, look, you're always asking the guys don't make the same mistake twice, so. Hopefully, as a staff, we do the same thing, and then they, they do that playing wise. Do you have any thoughts on the fight that occurred in the Steelers game? I didn't see it. I hear everybody talking about it, but I, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Coach, you, you, one of the things you said early was that the personnel or the packages, what they were doing, uh, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the last opponent. I'm on to the Chargers, too. Okay, that's uh, good. Titans, that's good. Uh, Tennessee, yeah. Doing, <laughs> that's a good thing. I'm old. Uh, dictated uh, kind of some of the things that you were doing. How, how much, I know it's a chess match, you, you put it in the, the chess match, it, but how much do you dictate to them? Now, I know they have guys that have to stay in a few blitz. And yeah. How much do you find that you're having to react to them versus making them react to you? Well, I, to me, and in, in all the years I've been doing this, it's you can, you can dictate it a little bit if you are more successful on first down. Then you get them, in, get them behind schedule. That's when you can do the dictating. If they stay on schedule, which feels like they made a conf, you know, uh, emphasis of doing that, then it makes it a little bit tough for us to dictate to them. Um, and that one particular drive I'm thinking about, that's kind of what they did. Um, and so, kudos to them. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you.